Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for another shoutcast. This is a game played on Richland some time ago, and I'm going to skip right to post peacetime. Most players didn't do too great a job building, so this isn't a game to learn from anyway, so not too much uh, shame in skipping that. Uh, we'll just go through the peacetime armies real quick and then get into the action right away. Bobby actually did a great job. Uh, this is a better build I've seen on this location. So I do take that back. He did a uh, really good job, actually. Being able to get this much iron on this location is uh, it's actually tricky because it's so far away. You can see this is a very decent army. We'll go uh, to Krolik, plan location 2. And he has nothing great. I mean, it's a good amount of leather, but I, this is a really... Um, you won't feel this at all in the fight. Uh, it's really, a, as Mexican says, no power at all. If his weapon production can catch up, he can uh, get some saving grace. But he's going to have a hard time supporting his allies with that army. Here's Cochise. Uh, did a fine job, actually. Quite a bit of armor. Uh, the swords, he, of course, has double weapons, so this will catch up. So, effectively, uh, 40 swords in uh, about two minutes here. Two or three minutes, if it runs right. And lots of leather. A, a good balance of... Uh, other types of units too. So good job by him. On their power location we have Don playing here and a good amount of horses. Nothing else is too spectacular considering it's a power location this army is uh, not great. But uh, at the same time I guess it's uh, it's not too bad. I like the horses is just about it. If you can use these horses nicely you can get something out of it. And it's a good amount of leather but you always really want your best armies coming out of the power location, but it's not too big a deal. Cochise is, of course, the best player in this team, so you really expect the most power from him anyway. Although, I would say that Bobby's army, army is almost as good. Almost as good, just because of the uh, additional horses here. Almost. <laughs> not quite. Anyway. I'm rambling. We'll go over to uh, Saddle, playing the leather location for the right side. A, again, uh, not a whole lot of power here at all. Good amount of leather, but not a whole lot else going on here. We have about 30 bows and 30 uh, axe fighters, which is decent, but no iron. If you don't get any iron, you should get at least 80 leather, and uh, at least 60 wooden weapons probably would be nice, if not more. And that would be ideal, I would say. If you go for iron, of course, you can take the loss. TB is playing location 7, and this is probably the hardest location on the map. Uh, we see right here, this is a bad shortcut, which is not working, but it's not that big of a deal of a road. But we're not talking too much about bases. Anyway, here he has a decent amount of iron, good amount of horses, good leather, a little short on wooden weapons, but no big deal. A scene play in our power location or really messed up this game he said uh, a pretty good amount of leather though uh, considering he also has some iron not a whole lot if he would have an extra 10 horses this would really uh, make a big difference you see he did go double stable but uh, he was really really late and get these buildings done so obviously you can you can see that two stables yet only seven horses And I never introduced my army, and rightly so, I believe, because, yeah, it's, well, it's not terrible, but it's not good either. Uh, a decent amount of horse, decent leather, but wooden weapons is nothing special, and uh, a little low on iron. Oh, and recruits are terrible. And... Uh... Uh, I'm going to start being overly critical <laughs> of my base, but anyway, we'll go ahead and get into it. Really aggressive tower play from Krolik here.
as usual, it's uh, very important to take the center on this map. If you don't take the center, you uh, lose a lot of advantage in dictating uh, which way you can push against the enemy. And it's uh, not easy to defend this area for the uh, bottom locations, or I should say the left side. If the enemy is pushed right here, then it's very easy for this guy uh, to un unite with his team. They can fight together and really coordinate the attack really well here. So this is why uh, you really want to avoid camping on this map, I guess, which is one of the best things about it. Anyway, you can see TB got caught over here when he was dancing, and uh, that begins our first fight. Krolik is getting annihilated here by himself. These X-Fires aren't going to hold for very long at all, but Don is here with some knights and Kochis' big brick of swords come. There's some knights here coming as well, but obviously Krolik's army here is going to be annihilated at a gain of nothing, really. TB's super aggressive though, will he continue to go in? No, but uh, my knights and uh, his TB swords get caught. Seem still staying over here on the right, not pushing or doing anything. These armies here are being distracted by that, so they're not getting caught into the fight. But nevertheless, Seem's army over here not doing a whole lot of damage. And the rest of the forces on the left side are going in. Kochi's big brick of swords are pounding through right here doing a good job holding the line as uh, this well I was gonna say these bows are doing are shooting but these guys are not facing the right way yeah they're trying to guard the right side over here but you can get a few shots over here and then turn around and uh, guard this area on the right these guys here are just doing nothing to get shot at and with only one group of bows to uh, two groups of bows even with Don's uh, flanking but with these uh, knights here Cochise's swords are gone. They have vanished. There's just too many, uh, too many enemy bows on the line there. And we'll go ahead and speed this up a bit. Cochise's army is gone, but Don here up in the north is doing some flanking. He will try to uh, cut us off here, and uh, he can get a lot of damage in. I don't know where he was during the fight, but he was definitely not in it. Uh, just like Seam over here still hasn't fought at all. I think he's uh, just been watching the clock or something. But he is uh, doing a little bit of pushing now. Uh, both power locations seem completely out of that fight. Uh, Don doing some flanking and had his knights there. But other than that, uh, both guys keeping their armies in reserve, so to speak. Lots of bows going down. Sato, TB, and I all losing all of our bows. And that leads for long games, actually, uh, when uh, <laughs> you see lots of bows from both sides dying. Although, come to think of that, these guys didn't lose a whole lot of bows, but they did lose a good chunk of them. And that is that the first fight is over. Seam's army is still fresh and unhampered. <laughs> he does a nice job. Uh, he'll probably get a, quite a few kills here. But when you get caught in this such a way, he really should have split them because now his superior knights are really not going to do a whole lot of... of uh... Well, I guess it'll be just fine. Anytime you have just melee fighting against melee, uh, you really want to make sure you can use advantages to win the battle. And the only way to u or use your superior numbers to win the battle. And if you're fighting head to head like that, sometimes you can get unlucky and uh, you just won't do any damage. Generally, um, range units will do the killing and your melee will just hold the line. But obviously, in such a situation, you don't have those. Anyway, I digress. Neither side feeling confident enough to do any kind of pushing. You see, uh, look at Sato here. He has some iron somehow oh it's over here okay he's trying to run a sword production with one iron mine he's 
trading away iron ore to logs. I think that's a mistake. <laughs> I hope it's a mistake. I think he meant to trade logs away to iron ore. Um, maybe Sato is pretty happy no one ever mentioned that before because <laughs> it's something people give him a hard time about. But yes, the shellcast has revealed it. Sato is trading away his iron ore to logs when his iron production is just not working. I mean, maybe he thinks one iron mine is too much. Nah. It's clearly a misclick. We'll go through and see what other terrible atrocities are being committed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not too sure on what to say on my base. I have a <laughs> excessive amount of woodcutters. Um, obviously these additional ones are doing uh, a whole lot of nothing. I think this was, was during a time I was trying to see... Uh, if building extra woodcutters and trading away the logs for corn was uh, was effective at all. But it turns out usually it's just too much of a hassle and it doesn't work really. Too hard to manage. Um, we'll go down and uh, we'll check out. See how Seam is doing. Is he catching up? What's his barracks look like? Uh, still tons of leather left over. Uh, he's building more farms and swine farms when he should be building more weapons workshops. I don't know what he's thinking. Only eight farms but continuing or eight woodcutters but continuing to make farms when he clearly doesn't need them. I'm not sure what he's thinking. and seems still continuing to keep his entire army over here and uh, we're being pushed quite heavily over on this side and uh, Saito has some guys camping out in the farms over there But uh, Sato, TB, and I are saying that uh, I guess we don't need uh, too much help. <laughs> As we're doing our best to hold this ourselves. Seems still not doing a whole lot of pushing. And I just, I do want to point out, this is a mistake. Uh, Seem uh, did definitely get reprimanded for this after the game. Really should uh, at least move his army through this mountain and uh, position it up in the center area here. Because it's doing absolutely nothing for us at the moment. You do want to leave maybe a little bit behind to uh, defend your base if they try to send a sneak attack. But generally, if the enemy is pushing, um, they can't risk splitting their army to do a sneak attack anyway. So you're relatively safe from doing so. And uh, keeping your army out of the game is usually not going to be very much anyway. And seem now send some knights up to the top. Well, maybe. <laughs> He's gonna try helping to hold the line down here. We're repelling them rather well at the moment. In the north, seem continues to collect soldiers in the bottom here. He has a massive army, way more. Especially with my bows helping him here, he could easily at least push on that.
Nothing but a whole lot of uh, archer pushing at the moment. Same as a big brick of horses here. Which can do quite a bit of damage. This is maybe 20 knights. 25 knights or so in the field right now. Seem continuing to uh, not be as aggressive as he should be. Maybe he's paying too much attention to his base. And Seam is finally making a big push on the bottom. So he's fighting in three spots or so right now. guys should boo do some kind of pushing maybe I don't know maybe they can't do too much damage anyway all really depends on how Seam performs on the bottom here his axe fighters here are just gonna disappear yeah really not too nice of an attack by him Lots of Axe Fighters on our side, just getting annihilated, which really could have made a difference in this game. You saw the big group here, and Sato just had a pretty decent sized group there, just getting annihilated, which can make a pretty big difference. So now it's starting to get pretty... My computer seems to be lagging or something. I was going to say it's, it's really when the battle starts to turn, but... Still seem to be spamming quite a bit. Sato uh, doing a good job getting fresh soldiers in the field here. And uh, a few more swords for myself and Tini. And neither side's going to feel strong enough to uh, attack after that big fight so they're gonna stop and either feed troops or fix their bases we'll go ahead and see how everyone's doing Cochise has pretty decent food although everything has starved it seems I, uh, um, everything starved for Cochise this game so <laughs> you know he was uh, down quite a bit of production for a while um, his goal is not working so that's definitely a problem, and it's going to hit his uh, production really hard. Um, see how Bobby is doing, or Krolik is doing. Lots of leather in the barracks, not getting that out. Lots of weapons for Bobby as well. Maybe his gold's not working very well either. Oh, he has three metallurgists and three schools. No, two schools. Okay. Let me just check this. Seem doing a great job getting his uh, soldiers out. He had a whole lot left over of extra leather, but he seemed to have managed to get them all out. With only three uh, weapon makers, actually. He must have traded a bunch, actually. Yeah, he was trading <laughs> leather jackets for wooden weapons. It's a terrible trade, but you do eventually, with five pig farms, you do get more leather than you can handle most of the time. But I was wrong, actually. Uh, these guys are making a push after the big fight, and they're going for Seam's base. 
Which is smart because they know he's the power location and that. Oh, excuse me. It's quite late here. But anyway, they know he's not gonna have any towers, of course, so. See so, yeah. how. Ooh, lots of traffic. Only one road in this area, going to the barracks. Even this little path here would help a lot, but. Mm, what a shame. TB has gold problems. <laughs> Classic TB. Always has problems getting recruits. Those are those soldiers there could make quite a big difference. Alright, and you can see definitely uh, we have an inferior amount of soldiers at this point. And they have a large force getting uncomfortably close to Seam's base. And they are also uh, inside my base at the moment too. Really was happy I made these uh, double row of towers. It's really uh, an unethical really to make so many towers, but um, you can see it's helping out a lot as they are unable to push further into my base. They're probably just worried of how many more might be back there. <laughs> and here you can see Seam is in a lot of trouble and can make a pretty big difference if they can do damage on him. And uh, whether it was just a rushed attack or not, they uh, just couldn't do as much. Or Seam just did a great job uh, holding that off. And this knight of mine doing nothing. That's unfortunate when that happens. But anyway, in the quick push from us to uh, drive them out of my base. And then go down and rescue Seam. Operation... Defend power look is starting. So it seems base is being overrun. One of coaches is still hasn't made any new farmers, which is his base is about. Even though that we've done damage or he's done damage to uh, seem, I mean, coach's base is running even worse really at this time. He does have serfs, but. He really needs to make some farmers. Because, you know, he's... See, he's starving really bad now. Again. And Seam's base is defended. Now you can see these guys are making push on the right side. But the uh, defenders and seams base are coming out to uh, help repel this army now. Some flanking maneuvers by seam and I. I'm gonna do some kills. No staying out of the fight for now. Bobby's doing a good job scurrying us off, but the rest of the army does fall. And 
once again. Seems base is defended. Well, the right side bases are defended. Who knows what way they were planning on attacking from there. See if TB still has, yeah, lots of weapons in his barracks. Let's do a quick run around and see uh, who has the most weapons in their barracks. Bobby, a whole lot. Prolic, quite a bit. Kochi's, decent amount. I don't know if it's whether he's because he's actually still managing the train stuff or if he's just not producing. Seem doing a good job managing that. Myself, way too many axes. Sado, a whole lot of stuff in there. TB, <laughs> peacetime army. And uh, Don doing a decent job of managing his barracks. Obviously, sometimes if you don't have a lot of weapons in your barracks, maybe you're not producing. But generally... Uh, players who are uh, keeping their barracks empty late game are doing so because they're actually making soldiers. Sometimes, like with TB, he doesn't have enough recruits, or uh, you see Bobby here, not enough leather. Seam earlier had to trade leather away to get wooden weapons. And even if you're making bad trades like that, it's still, still that leather is doing more good for you in bad trades than just sitting in the barracks. Get rid of them. Into the and now uh, they're going to go ahead and do some damage on TV's base, killing some farmers and other kind of havoc they can do. They're also getting uh, some nice scouting too, which is important even this late in the game. Curly soldiers all the way up there. Uh, TV's down to 15 serfs. We still have quite a large army. They lost a lot damaging TV there. And keep in mind, uh, Coach's base is gone. It's just like done. Four farmers now, and they're probably all hungry. So we're still going to be able to hold on for a while. And at this point, we realize we need to do damage to them. Especially because we didn't realize how badly uh, Kochis was starving. So, well, maybe we should have. And maybe Kochis's peeps farmers didn't starve, maybe they were killed. And if those farmers were killed, whoever did so had the most valuable knight in the history of Knights and Merchants. Because he did a lot of damage. And that may have been what happened. And I don't know who it was, but they deserve a medal. <laughs> I didn't even realize it, so... It effectively took out a player late game just because those... Uh, Farmers died. Uh, 
Alright, and now these guys are making a push on Seam again. And we are going to see a base trade because... Well, it seems like we're moving back down. We have some army up in here and we realize... Uh, probably be enough to uh, at least uh, do good damage. And we're still going to try to save Seam here. So we're kind of gonna going to have kind of a base trade here. We'll see how it works out. And in the meantime, I send uh, some knights and saddle sends a knight down to, to go ahead and do damage to uh, Macrolic as well. So we have uh, people infiltrating on all sides. Uh, everyone's bases are getting some surfs killed now. Macrolic is being attacked. And uh, Bobby is going to feel a little bit of pain here if we move further south. But Seam is out of the game. He's not going to be able to recover from this. And at this point, we decide to do just a full base trade and march in completely into Krolik's base. And here is a little conundrum. There are no towers over here and only one tower at this entrance, so these guys are going to walk right in. Bobby has knights in his base, Krolik has knights in his, his as well. In fact, a whole army really. Uh, we're moving back out of the towers and we need to address this because these armies are going to march into uh, our, territory, our territory. And here is a question that is not often answered in Knights and Merchants, and it's going to be uh, important in this game. How do you win? <laughs> and that's when all important buildings, which are schools, storehouses, and barracks, are destroyed. And technically, that's how you win the game, is to destroy all those buildings. Now, most times people just resign. At this point, it could be in the air. Uh, and it's a race to see whoever can destroy those buildings first. And that's exactly what you see going on. Everyone is destroying the important buildings of players. Although Krolik is uh, not on the ball over here. And that could make a huge difference. My base though is, is gone. One way or another. And uh, there's no coming back from this. Well, these guys can do enough damage. But Bobby's base has lost a lot of serfs as well. Just couldn't neglect the uh, presence in here. Coach's base is out and Dan's base is out. So at this point their only chance is to go ahead and kill our armies because they're not producing anymore. And my army is gone. And they still have a good chunk in here. TV's quite out of the game but Saddle has some nice reinforcements coming. Will it be enough? We have quite a few knights up here as well. And Saddle with a good chunk of soldiers here. And there you have it. With these armies uh, of the enemies of, well, my enemy. <laughs> Our enemies, uh, soldiers, are just about completely eradicated and they were not able to uh, do enough damage. And so at this point the game is called and that was it actually. I just accidentally clicked that button. And it was a crazy, crazy long game. The longest I played in a very in any kind of recent memory went down almost to destroying the important buildings it was really one of those games where you didn't know who was going to win until the very end i hope it was at least uh somewhat exciting for you watching it uh, it was definitely one of the most exciting games i've played
even if everyone played pretty bad. But sometimes not everyone needs to play great to have a fun game, right? And you can see here uh, on the graph, sometimes you can see what went wrong on some people. Uh, if this is from being killed or if this is from starvation. Food graph is interesting. See, TB and Coach is both starved quite bad. With a saddle being the only guy whose base wasn't didn't have a full scale attack inside of it. Uh, TB probably having the best kill death ratio. Probably. I'm not sure. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you around for the next shoutcast.